Yo, what's up with y'all, man? I hope you're doing good. If you're new and you're a fan of the NBA, subscribe to this channel. So let's get straight into it. It's like it's mini May, hijack four, running gay, 24, number eight, coach shit, fade away. All this is 11 grades, still in school, let them hate. So as I'm scrolling through my timeline across all social media sites like last week or two weeks ago, I see that once again, Nick Wright, no surprise there, was being crucified for something that he said just last week or two weeks ago now. Now what did he say specifically to piss so many people off over the internet? I don't know, I can't tell you because I don't watch that show myself and I didn't click any of the thumbnails that I saw either. But a certain idea spurred it into my mind and I thought to myself, wait a minute Mojo, this is a chance for you to go ahead and get in your bag. Instead of making a pyramid about all the current players, all the top elite players in the NBA or maybe even NBA players from the past, why not make one for young players, specifically rookies? To make sure that this video idea wasn't done before, I went ahead and did a quick YouTube search, NBA pyramids. And of course, the GOAT showed up Jimmy Hyrule. Except in that two part video that he did, he was doing Legend. So, right now, we're going to do, at least I'm assuming so, something that nobody has done before yet. I would absolutely hate it for someone to steal my idea and run off with the drip. It happened to me before, and it wasn't a good feeling, bro. Trust me, I was sick. And for that, I'm just gonna clearly put it out there. Shout out to Hyrule for this thumbnail inspiration. Now, with all of that out the way, let's just go ahead and get straight into this heater. Now in this pyramid, we are pretty limited, and we will be pretty inaccurate looking back at this video either a couple months or maybe even a couple weeks from now. That's how crazy things can sway in the NBA. Now in this rookie pyramid that we are creating, well, hold on, y'all ain't creating nothing. That I am creating, actually, hmm. I just thought of an idea. You watching this video right now should go ahead and participate on this. If you don't want to participate, bro, at least think about it. Do not just sit there and watch me create one. I highly encourage you to create one yourself because I just know that some of y'all will try to roast me and my pyramid and the way things are set up. You know, I think some change should happen around here. For once, I want to be able to get on your head. So make this pyramid with me while you're at it. Go ahead and tag me on Instagram and show me a screenshot of your pyramid and I'll post it on my story. Or go ahead and post yours down below in the comment section so everybody else can make fun of you as well. Anyways, this pyramid is not based off of accomplishments or quality of careers, like the GOAT pyramids that you're used to seeing. It is instead based off a of skill right now and just how well they have been playing in the NBA since they've been drafted. So if I mess around and decide to drop another pyramid video in like two to three months from now and a guy who was at tier four somehow becomes a top tier, maybe the best rookie in the NBA and wins that rookie of the year, I'm warning to not be surprised and also I want to specifically note that that changes nothing we're going off of what these rookies are able to do right now in this very moment when it comes to building pyramids you gotta start from the bottom and work your way up who the hell starts from the top and works their way down? I'm looking at you. You do it, huh? Something's wrong with you, man. Anyways, though, at tier four, I have six rookies. Now, something that these rookies have in common is that they aren't playing the greatest right now, but they're definitely making some type of noise. They weren't as good just yet coming out the gate, but they have the capabilities to be higher ranked. So here is tier four, the lowest tier that I'm personally doing in this video. James Wiseman, Cole Anthony, Anthony Edwards, Isaac Okoro, and quick something in common for all of these guys ironically enough is that they're all pretty inefficient the most efficient out of this group is James Wiseman and he's the first player that we're not gonna pick on but talk about today so far Wiseman's time as a Golden State Warrior has been pretty decent okay but I don't know that as time has gone by he's been talked about less and less and he hasn't been playing as many minutes as I thought he would be playing the man's getting like garbage time of course he's starting and all that but he hasn't been really able to make much noise or show a lot of potential. Now, when I say that a lot of these guys are inefficient, James Wiseman shoots like 48% from the field right now, I believe, as in the making of this video. Now, yes, 48% from the field is damn near 50%. That is technically efficient, but for a big man who gets most of his shots off around the rim, that is not efficient whatsoever. Now, for me, unlike a lot of people, I didn't expect James Wiseman to come out the gate running like a gazelle, putting up third year Giannis type numbers or anything like that. No, I knew that he was gonna show glasses and glasses 
What is glasses and glimpses? Flash is my bad and glimpses of what he could potentially be, but he's just not that right now. He doesn't have the IQ to be that right now, nor the playing experiences as well. But as the season goes on, I ain't gonna lie, I'm not gonna be surprised if he was to up his play, up his efficiency, and up his IQ, and just be more of what a lot of people labeled him to be since he was like 17, 18 years old. Anthony Edwards, oh man, it feels like literally nobody talks about this man ever, ever, ever. I ain't gonna lie, Anthony Edwards just kind of giving me 2018 NBA draft DeAndre Ayton type vibes. Yeah, I say DeAndre Ayton type vibes because DeAndre Ayton was the most physically like dominating rookie out of them all. But when it comes to you know his clout, his hype, and how much people were talking about him around town, literally nobody was doing that. And that's the same exact thing that's happening to Anthony Edwards, except he's playing a lot worse than DeAndre Ayton in his first few games as a rookie. Edwards has been averaging like 12 to 13 points, three assists, or two assists, my bad, and like three rebounds, but he averages the same amount of turnovers as assists, so that's not really good news. And also, his shot is currently not going down, like at all. Now his role on the team, I believe, is just about perfect for him because you want to give him the keys and let him do something on offense, but you don't want to let him control the show completely because or else things might get a little ugly. He's not that type of player. But he needs shots and he needs opportunity. He is getting that in Minnesota, but not as much as he's used to. His efficiency, I believe, is gonna go up and down and up and down consistently in his rookie season, and honestly, I'm not too worried about that. More so, I'm worried about how he's gonna be developed in Minnesota. Regardless of the fact, though, still a good rookie, y'all just need to talk about him more, and that's not my fault, that's just your fault watching it right now. Next player up on tier four is Cole Anthony. Now, Cole Anthony's efficiency is ah, not the greatest either. Like, once again, all these rookies are on the same tier, partly for the same reason, but at the same time, Cole Anthony's a rookie that I personally said that like was gonna be the seal of the draft. Now, it's not looking like that right now, but things could very well change in a few years. Cole Anthony has the confidence, the cockiness, the, oh, I was about to say the look. Something's wrong with me right there, oh man. Anyways, the cockiness, the confidence, and he also has the skill to be another great scoring point guard in the league. Now, I'm not sure if he has all-star potential, but he has something closer to that. But regardless of the fact, right now, he's not playing that well on the Orlando Magic. And I think, of course, his numbers will increase due to Marco Fultz, you know what I'm saying, get better soon, going down with an ACL tip. So by the next time I remake this pyramid video, I can pretty much guarantee you that this man, Cole Anthony, will increase his efficiency, his points per game, and then just his stats all around. Right now, he's shooting like, bro, like 30. 30% from the field and 30 from the three-point line and also 88% from the line which is something that gives you a lot of hope so don't take these efficiency stats and just think oh they're gonna be inefficient players their entire career or their entire rookie season no it's gonna sway up and down the last two rookies that I want to talk about is Isaac Okoro and Emmanuel quickly now Isaac Okoro is someone that I slept on heavily now why did I sleep on him bro I ain't gonna lie I slept on him because of some other rookie who was kind of similar to him back in college and I missed a really hard on him and when I once I saw Isaac Okoro of course I love this game who, who doesn't love this game he's someone that you'd love to have on your favorite team because he does all the dirty work he's a defensive menace and he's also a pretty smart offensive player if you ask me he doesn't do too much on with the ball he's just a really solid piece to have and this really solid piece has been doing solid things for the Cleveland Cavaliers and he's been their best defensive player if you ask me now his numbers are nothing too overwhelming or too special he's averaging like eight points on 40 percent shooting from the field and like 30 percent from three and 62 from the free throw line which is a major yikes and that's something that he's gonna forever maybe not forever but he that's something he's gonna have to work on for the next few years throughout his career but for a rookie right now he's still recognizable and he's someone who should be talked about more but he's not because i ain't gonna lie there's a huge elephant in the room right now i'm gonna say it anyway He's in Cleveland. Emmanuel quickly though is someone who is not in Cleveland and he actually has one of the brightest, God man, he may have the brightest spotlight in the NBA with being a New York Nick. Man has been putting up numbers these last like few games, these last two games actually. And I think he's someone very notable to pay attention to as the season goes on, especially on the New York Knicks because Lord have mercy, they need shooters and he is a shooter that they could desperately play on a consistent basis. Tier three is having a better rookie season than tier four obviously, but none of these rookies I'm about to name were too obvious to predict and are playing unexpected key roles on their teams while being efficient. Here is tier three, Xavier Tillman, Desmond Bain, and Peyton Pritchard. Except for Celtics fan, y'all probably don't know who Xavier Till Tillman is. You probably know who Desmond Bain is. And of course, as I said earlier, you know who Peyton Pritchard is. Now, Peyton Pritchard may be the most like popular out of the three because he's on the Boston Celtics and, you know, 
He has fan base, you know what I'm saying, and all that type of stuff. He might be the most fun player to watch considering that he's a crafty guard who's quick with the ball, he's small, and he's super feisty, and he doesn't back down from nothing. He's a point guard that the Boston Celtics really could use in key moments as the season goes on. Because I ain't gonna lie, the Celtics bench is low-key weak. Like, Marcus Smart doesn't have to carry the bench now and have to be the outlier out of the bench group to, you know, carry things and put things over his shoulder. They have Payne Pritchard now, who was averaging like 9 points, shooting like 50% from the field and 44% from the three-point line. As a rookie, boy, that's something different. He hits different on the court. He's something, he's someone, even though he's a, he has such a small frame, his energy he just roars something much louder. His energy and how he carries himself is much bigger than he actually is. And here's another plus also. He has a nice first name and last name. Has a nice ring to it. Peyton Pritchard. Really fun to say. The other two players that I mentioned earlier, Xavier Tillman and Desmond Bain, just happen to be on the same team, the Memphis Grizzlies, bro. You all need to clap it up for Grizzlies because they've been doing their mother effing thing these last few years with drafting John Morant, trading away Mark Gasol, getting Jonas Valanciunas. They've been in their bag, and they've been in their bag for like the last few years now. And y'all just need to slide them a couple W's their way because Desmond Bain is no joke. He was rumored to be or suspected to be these deal of the draft, and a lot of people already saw how low or could envision how low he would fall in the NBA draft, and he ended up being a later first round pick and. Xavier Tillman. Yo, fun fact, my girlfriend's brother went to school with this man, high school with this man. Anyways, I don't know why I just had, literally had nothing to do with the video, but anyways, this man Xavier Tillman, who's looking like a steal, and right now, I ain't gonna lie, in terms of play right now as you speak, he's the best center out of this class. For right now though, that's like no shot at James Wiseman or even my center on Yeki and Fongu. Like, he just came back as well. But anyways, Xavier Tillman is doing his thing. He's a defensive whiz and also is pretty nice offensively. And Desmond Bain is a shooter from hell who was like extra ripped and buff. And we look at him, you you like you're like, who this guy? He probably can't shoot luck for his life. But actually, that's like a damn lie. He can shoot. He can not only shoot the lights out, but he can also defend pretty well too. The Memphis Grizzlies did it again. Here they are. Got tier three rookies when they have no business being here. Moving on to tier two now, though. Tier two is playing excellent and are showing often glimpses of being a part of the all NBA first team at the end of the year and could easily and possibly slide their way into the rookie of the year combo if tier one ever slips up. They've either slick met or surpassed expectations while having minor limitations to their game this early into their career. Revealing to you tier two. Tyrese Maxey, Denny Abdia, and Patrick Williams. Oh my god, like, bro. I remember streaming the NBA draft and hearing the Chicago Bulls draft Patrick Williams. I had, like, the, one of the most funniest reactions I've had on this channel, point blank, period, because I've, of course, heard of Patrick Williams. I knew who that was, but I literally did not mention him in a single draft video. So for me to hear Patrick Williams, someone who I expected to be taken, like, in the 20th or 15th, you know, some mid to late lottery, taken fourth overall, it was, like, shocking to me. It was brain numbing because I was like, yo, like, here's an ongoing joke. I said, like, yo, like, someone named Patrick just was picked fourth overall in the NBA draft. He can do that, bro. You can do anything, too. But Patrick Williams being as good as he is right now, bro, I ain't gonna lie. It's just, it's just brain numbing because it's just like, why didn't I see this coming? Who could have saw this coming? As far as I know, nobody saw this coming. He's shooting with extremely well efficiency from the court. He looks really poised and in control whenever he has the ball in his hands. He's super comfortable with, you know, once in a while making plays for others just once in a while, I repeat. And he's also good defensively. And when it comes to a shot, bro, a shot is loads better than I actually thought it would be. He's shooting like 87% from the free throw line, 48% from three, and 49% from the field. His shooting is no fluke at all. Now, I ain't gonna lie, one thing that I also said about him is that he's a power forward, bro. Screw being power forward. What he's doing right now is beautiful. In this age of positionless basketball, play him at power forward, play him at small forward, it doesn't really matter because it's all positionless anyway. Dude averaging like 11 points at four to five boards the game is something that a lot of Chicago Bulls fans didn't see coming so soon at this rate at all. Patrick is someone that a lot of people, including myself, Brian Odo to my O's, I don't claim to be right on everything. No, nope, I just vent in front of a camera about my basketball thoughts and opinion. That's all. Y'all do whatever y'all want with the rest. Long story short though, Patrick Williams is that dude. Someone else who was also that dude is that man, Tyrese Maxey. Now, luckily, I believe the, um, 
what how should I say it without being demonetized? Oh, contact tracing because of that whole situation with the 76ers, this man was able to put up like 39 damn near 40 points once Joel and B Ben Simmons basically their entire start like starting lineup was out. All they had was Tyrese Maxi, and Tyrese Maxi did what Tyrese Maxi does. The man barely misses floaters, he was of course was getting his own shots off, creating plays for others, and just doing what he absolutely can to put his team back on the right track when it comes to winning basketball games. And because of those performances, I believe that prevented him possibly from getting added to any potential James Harden trade. And also, it kind of put him on, and he's now in the starting lineup, which is kind of crazy. If that never happened, if Seth Curry never caught the end, you know what I'm saying? If he never caught that, this man, Tyrese Maxey, would not be in the starting lineup right now. And honestly, I believe that once Seth Curry comes back, I believe that he should be on the bench and just play the six-man role. And also, anyways, Tyrese Maxey's not going to be on the bench forever. Just go ahead and let him get his reps right now so he can do something in the playoffs and just not disappear when you throw him into the fire or if you ever throw him into the fire. The last player on tier two that I didn't get to touch on yet and someone that I can't touch on too much because he hasn't played as much or had as much opportunity as the last two players that I've been speaking on is Denny Avdia. Denny Avdia hasn't had the consistent minutes, the consistent love, the consistent touches as Patrick Williams because he has a baller in Bradley Beal who's taking a lot of shots. His point guard is like Russell of Westbrook and not to say Russell Westbrook was a bad point guard or anything like that but bro like when it comes to like player growth it's not gonna happen at a high rate with Russell Westbrook on your team but anyways he has him on his team and they also have Scott Brooks as the coach which is like he just needs to get fired already on so I still don't know why he has a job in the NBA as a head coach it's kind of weird to me but whatever that's not my business what is my business I was speaking on Denny Avdia and how underutilized I feel like he is being used in Washington the man put up like 20 points the other day as soon as Russell Westbrook and Bradley Beal were not available to play just like they put up like 25 and 5 which is crazy and honestly I would not be surprised if this man had the capabilities to average something like that one day Denny of is on this list so high on this tier rankings list for a reason now to get to the fun and to get to talking about tier number one these two players will be going back and forth over the rookie of the year award so far their play styles are hella fun to watch and they're both lead guards who cannot be kept out of the rotation even though their respective team's biggest strength prior to them being drafted was the point guard position Tyrese Maxey and LaMelo Ball those two are on a tier of their own and the case is closed nobody he saw Tyrese Maxey first off getting drafted so late to the Sacramento Kings that was like low-key a steal but no one also saw him being able to translate so quickly in the NBA and apply what he did in college literally to the NBA so seamlessly and be this effective and pulling off rip it's kind of rare when you see a rookie like him just be leaned on when he's needed to in any moment. He's one of the very few rookies who's playing clutch time moments right now off of the bench. The Sacramento Kings now realize what type of talent he is and he's on the court. The Kings are rocking a three-man lineup of Fox, Heels, and Tyrese Halliburton at the three or or two, whichever one you want to pick. All you need to know is that Tyrese Halliburton is nice, and if you disagree with him being so high, then that just simply means that you haven't watched any Kings games. But hey, do I really blame you for not watching any Sacramento Kings games because they're not good? I don't know, man. Maybe it's just me, but watching Tyrese Halliburton play basketball is just something really fun to do, for me at least. And also, something really fun to do as well is watching that man, of course, the Melo Ball play basketball. Now, I'm not going to speak too much on the Melo Ball because I'm pretty sure you're already tired but literally like word for word verbatim like what scouts said he was good at in the NBA and like okay yeah he is currently that in the NBA for the Charlotte Hornets he's a great playmaker an elite playmaker a great rebound I'd say elite he's averaging like seven boards a game and he's also a three-point shooter the plays that this Ben's be making the type of passes that he makes makes him the swaggiest point guard in the league if you ask me and also one of the brightest stars in the league or at least soon to be one of the brightest stars if not already now one thing that LaMelo Ball has to work on is his efficiency. Like, if the Rookie of the Year race was to end right now, Tyrese Halliburton is winning in that point bank period. Like, that's the end of the discussion. I'm sorry. Tyrese Halliburton's shooting splits are ridiculous. He's shooting 52% from the field, 3 and 81 from the line. LaMelo Ball shooting like 60 something from the line, and he's shooting 40% from the field and 33% from the line. Those are incomparable. Not only does Tyrese have better stats, but their teams are relatively both ranked to the same. Neither team is like 
crazy better than the other and neither of these rookies were able right now as we speak to make their team hella better so if the rookie of the year race was to end right now Tyrese Halliburton is probably gonna win but it would not surprise me at all if LaMelo Ball was to catch up real quick and up that efficiency because bro he's just nice like that and he was born to do this you just watched me create my NBA rookie pyramid you watched me create mine and as said in the beginning of the video I hope you created yours based off of the same principle don't agree with some of my tiers and where I rank certain players cool that's perfectly fine I really want you to disagree with me because just getting along with everybody is kind of lame bro I need some toxicity right now in the comment section I'm sorry I love it when y'all disagree because me and you can go back and forth and have a true discussion now warning again the tiers for my next pyramid video maybe a month or a month and a half from now could drastically change and that is expected This is the end of the video though man i really really do appreciate you for coming over here on my channel and seeing what i have to talk about today now i ain't gonna lie as usual bro you're like hella nosy which is weird you like to check on me every time why do you do that i don't know but i appreciate you for doing that now if you want to check on me more often go ahead and follow me on instagram follow me on twitter and also more importantly than all that like as for now especially more importantly than all that go ahead and leave a like on this video comment subscribe and turn on that mojo vacation bell do that for me please youtube trying to get me up out of here but like i refuse bro i'm relentless anyways do all that but more important than every single thing that i just said make sure that you my boy make your day great until then i'll get right with you no way no way when i couldn't get a play no hope i have a place to stay i got the work made it free the way so my girl who'd have a